Hey, how's it going? It's Carl Arietta, aka Carl Drum Tech, and I'm here once again to drop another video uh, providing you guys with more knowledge based on my 16 years of teaching, 16 plus years of teaching um, in the marching percussion activity, and hopefully the tips I have today will be helpful and beneficial to you. So um, I was inspired to create this video today based on my recent drum lesson with one of my private students, and um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about how to play you know, certain rudiments faster, and um, this video right here will address some of it, but I, I'm gonna have a feature video to kind of break it more uh, in depth, break it down more in depth. And um, so basically, you know, I try to get them to play faster flam drags. And, uh, you know, we're kind of, we're at this level right now, we're playing it really slow, which is fine, but now it's just like, okay, now we got that down, let's try to push it. And, you know, a lot, like a lot of students who are just fir first learning how to do this stuff, you know, they don't know exactly how to do that. So one, one technique I use is just like, try to play one flam drag really fast. Once you get that down, add the left flam from there as a release. So as, as an exercise, I do four of those, and then after that, play the full uh, flam drag right to left. So once he gets that down, at least the first four check, right, check patterns. Um, you know, getting rid of all the pops and all the low quality stuff here and there, and you know, getting it semi consistently. Um, you know, it became time to add that. You know, that the next the next step, right? So he's able to do this. Then the next step is to add basically another diddle and another tap, right? Now he's able to play the first four good, but then when it came time to it, it's like. And to me, that makes no sense because if you can play these flams at a high quality, at the very least, the first two flams of the flam brag should be good, right? Because you're already doing this. So that should already be good, but it, for whatever reason, right, he's still not able to make that connection where it's just like, yo, you just did the same thing over and over again at a high level. You're just gonna do two more of those, only you're just gonna add a diddle and a tap after that. And it makes no sense for you to pop those first two flams of the flam of the full flam drag. And um, I think this is just a very common problem, you know, with all of us, where it's just like, you know, we're able to play something in excellence or execute something in excellence, and then you just add one little element, right, that kind of challenges us. You know, just you know, adding something onto the thing that we already you know have down. You know, and then all of a sudden, like, we lose the quality. Like, we lose, you know, the, the quality that we had with the basic things that we had down just, but just, by, add, just by virtue of adding something new. And um, a lot of it, and that just kind of brings me to the conclusion that this is all, a lot of it is, is a mental game. It's a mental process where you have to basically trick your brain into thinking, yo, like, it's the same thing. Just you're just adding you know one or two little elements and you should be good to go. Um, I think this is a very common problem. I think you know we all kind of deal with this kind of stuff. I mean you know I don't know if you guys know but you know I love basketball. I do play basketball and um, I was working with a personal trainer who helped me with basketball and um, I used to not be able to hit three point shots. I could hit mid range shots like you know like inside the three point line and uh, but then like you know once I get past the three point line I can't hit the shot. And what my trainer told me was like, yo, it makes no sense that you can hit shots below the, th the three point line and then take two steps back and not be able to hit shots. It makes no sense. And you know, that, that, that's completely true. It's like, you know, it's the same shot, it's the same mechanics. Basically, you're just taking two steps so it's a little bit further and then, you know, like all of a sudden everything changes. Sure, it's a little bit different, but at the same time, you know, it's like, it's not that much different. So I worked on the shot, worked on it, and then finally I was able to do it. And, you know, again, it's just a lot, a lot of it's a mental process where you have to tell your brain, like, yo, you know how to do this is just a little bit more challenging than what you're used to. Um, you know, just how many times have we had issues with just like, you know, for example, consistency. We can play something really well for like maybe two, three, four times, but that fifth time or that sixth time is like kind of iffy, right? So, you know, but in some ways, again, right, that makes no sense. It's like, you just played it the first four times well, why can't you do it the fifth time well? Why can't you do it the sixth time? 
So, you know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of it is the physical aspect of it and, you know, getting your hands to and getting your body used to executing at a high level. But at the same time, it's also a mental thing where it's like you have to get past that mental block that says, like, no, this is different. Like, I can't do that. Like, you know, even though I ex executed well, I can't do more than what I can do. So, you know, um, I think it's just really important that we kind of trick our brains to saying, nope, it's the same thing. Just keep plugging away, keep working at it, and uh, eventually it will click and you will get it. Um, so um, basically that's uh, all I had today as far as, you know, some knowledge that hopefully could help you, um, you know, that drumming, you know, playing music or anything that we do, any activity that we do, anything that we you know we were trying to uh, get better at as a skill set, um, the mental aspect of what we're trying to do is almost as important, if not more important, than the physical aspect of what we do. So um, just something to consider, and uh, hopefully um, you guys got something out of this video, and until next time, take care. Hey, what's up everyone? So um, I've also had requests to uh, show them how I do my stick taping. So um, I will do that right now. And um, you know, if it's useful to you, that'll be good. And then maybe you'll learn something new. But um, so how I do my stick taping, there's two ways. Um, one way, okay, so hopefully y'all can see this. Um, so I'm gonna start here at the tip of the stick and I have my stick tape here. And um, I'm just gonna basically start at the top and I'm going to wrap this around here okay like this okay so that's my starting point okay um, so you know maybe like go over that you know once or twice and then start making my way down okay and then um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, follow along here and then I'm gonna start to see a line okay so do you see that right so you see that line okay so I'm just gonna kind of follow that line so whatever width I'm I'm getting here I'm gonna try to duplicate that for the rest of the stick and I'm just gonna work my way all the way down um, it's definitely not an exact science so you kind of have to eyeball it so if it starts getting like a little so if that line starts to get a little thin you know or th too thick um, you may just want to pull back and then just retry it again like this and um, you can tape it all the way down to the bottom okay or you can tape it down to um, you know where you would have your thumb um, and it's just a preference, you know, basically because, you know, some people like to feel, you know, the tape on their hands and some people like to feel the wood on their hands. So I personally prefer wood, so I only tape it to maybe about like if, if you're using the Vic Firth, um, it's about where the flag is. So that's how I do it. Um, the other way I do it, okay, so let, let me just undo here. All right, so same thing, same starting process, okay, so set up the base at the top, okay, and then what I'm going to do is... I'm going to, so once I see the line, if you guys can see that, um, I'm going to go underneath the line. And so it kinda, hold on, so it kinda looks like this. All right, so this process is gonna take a little bit longer um, just because it's basically, you know, with one tape, you're going to be essentially double taping it because it's, uh, it's just the tape kind of covers itself a little bit more. Um, you're going to leave a little bit of a space in between um, the lines. So there is going to be a little bit of a crack as you go down. But um, so that's the number two way I do stick taping. And actually, it's my favorite way to do, do it. Um, so obviously, there's a lot of good reasons for taping your sticks. A lot of it's just, you know, uh, uh, for longevity of your sticks to protect them, you know, against rim shots and things like that. And, um, you know, some of it's feel, some of it is, you know, the decorative aspect, I guess you could say. And um, so anyways, let, let me not bore you with all this stuff. So let me show you a finished product. So stick tape version number one, okay, is gonna look like this. I don't know if the camera can focus on it. Maybe not. Okay, but kind of looks like that. Okay, stick tape option number two kind of looks like that. So the lines aren't as visible, but um, it's definitely a lot tighter. Camera's not focusing. Sorry, guys. 
anyways, so there you have it. Um, hopefully that was helpful to you. And uh, I did try, try to do the best I can. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys next time.